Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools to inspire you to create beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I am here with six high-end looking Dollar Tree and thrift store spring DIYs, so let's get crafting. For today's first DIY, we're going to make this birdhouse welcome sign using a wall shelf, a welcome garden sign, and three small birdhouses from Dollar Tree, as well as some greenery. So first, I'm taking the wall shelf. It's got jute twine and a metal ring. Flipping it to the bottom, I'm just cutting the four knots and setting that aside for now. Then I'm taking my Waverly Antique Wax and a baby wipe and I'm just darkening up this um, wood looking paper on the top side of the wall shelf. Just get a nice coat uh, as dark as you'd like and then set that aside to dry. Next, taking our three small birdhouses, we're going to paint the body of the birdhouse using Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. So I'm just going around and painting on all four sides of each of my three small birdhouses. Next, while those are drying, I'm coming now to my welcome sign. This is a new item this year, at least in my Dollar Trees, in the garden craft section. I'm going to use that same plaster chalk paint color to paint all of the letters in the word welcome. Now coming back to our birdhouses, I'm going to paint the base and the roof of each birdhouse with truffle chalk paint. I'm also going to paint the little pegs that are at the front of each of our birdhouses. And now coming back to the welcome sign, we're gonna use that same truffle brown on the pot and also the handle of the little garden rake. Next, I'm going to take fern green and paint the little plant. Then I'm going to use the yellow chalk paint color called maize to paint the rain boots and a silver paint marker to finish painting the little garden rake. Next, I took these little eye screws and put one into the top of each of my birdhouses. I kind of tried to sand a little flat area, hold it with my pliers while I hit it a couple times with the hammer, and then screwed it in by hand. Next, taking the bottom of our sign, I'm using slightly bigger ones and basically hammering them in and then screwing them in by hand or with pliers the rest of the way. And you will be able to see here, I will have three of them spaced evenly across the bottom of our sign. Next, I took that jute twine that was came with the wall shelf. I did remove one of the pieces of jute, so now I just have the ring and a piece hanging down on the left and the right. I'm gonna put that back through my top two holes, flip it to the back and tie a knot again so that my metal ring is hanging at the center. Then we'll cut off the excess. And this is, we're just gonna reuse this to be able to hang up this sign. Thank you. 
Then I took my hot glue and putting some on the back of our welcome sign that we painted. We're gonna glue that down to our wall shelf now. I decided to use the other piece of twine that I removed from the ring and I'm going to glue it here to the back and wrap it twice around the end of the sign to cover up the hole on the bottom. And I'll do that to both sides. Next, I used a little bit of greenery and some florals and then some floral moss from Dollar Tree to decorate the front of each of my three birdhouses a little bit. Lastly, to attach my three birdhouses, I'm taking a thin piece of twine, putting it through the screw eye hook on the top of the sign, and then taking that same piece of jute twine through the top of each birdhouse. And I'm just tying this in a knot at different lengths. I tried to get my left and right birdhouses the same length and my middle one a little bit longer. And here's what it looks like. I love how this turned out. It's so happy for spring and as neutral or colorful as you'd like it to be. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I am so glad that you found me. I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. And if you are one of my returning viewers or subscribers, thank you so much for coming back each and every week. I hope everyone will tap that bell and make sure your notifications are set to all so YouTube should let you know when I go live on my channel or upload a new video. For DIY number two, we're going to use one of these cookie canisters from Dollar Tree, as well as some moss, some floral foam, and some of these wood sticks. So the first thing I did once we ate the cookies is I took my Waverly chalk paint in hazelnut. I was just trying to get a color that kind of was similar to the color of the wood slices. And I'm just gonna go around this with one coat just to cover up the shininess and also the bright blue. Once that's dry, you can apply some hot glue to the bottom, and this floral foam circle just happened to be the right size to fit inside here, but you can use the green floral foam would actually be easier here in a future step. Now I did use two packages of these sticks called wood slices, and I also did use my saw to cut a few of them a little smaller so they were not all exactly the same height. Although some of them in the packages did have um, some shorter ones, a lot of them were the same height. But just go around, I'm putting hot glue on the stick next to it and then also on the can to apply my wood sticks all the way around. Then putting more hot glue on top of the foam, I'm gonna put a layer of the floral moss to cover up the foam and to give it more of a natural look for the succulents that we're going to add on top. Next, to add a little bit more texture, I took my thin jute twine, wrapped it around my canister and tied it in a knot, and then I'm going to wrap it about four or five times around and then tie the knot again. Thank you. 
Now our container is decorated and ready. You can just add whatever florals or succulents or rocks or fairy garden, whatever you'd like to this. And I just love that I was able to repurpose the cookie canister from Dollar Tree. For DIY number three, we're gonna make some really pretty pedestal birdhouses using two of these larger birdhouses this year from Dollar Tree, some pretty scrapbook paper, and three of these glass candlesticks. The first thing I always do when I'm going to paint glass is I do a first layer of Mod Podge. So that's what I'm doing on all three of my candlesticks, and I'm going to let that dry completely. I just find that this helps the paint be able to stick better. Then I'm taking my plaster Waverly chalk paint, and again, I'm just going to apply a good layer around each of my candlesticks, trying to make sure it's as evenly coated as possible. Once those are dry, I will spray them with a clear matte spray as well. Now I chose out of my stash two different really pretty floral scrapbook papers that I wanted to use for covering my birdhouses. And I measured the rectangular sides and then I'm also measuring the dimensions of the side that has the pointed roof and I'll show you how we're going to cut that those angles. So I took one and I kind of used my fingernail to trace out where to cut and then used that piece as a template for my other pieces that would need to fit on those peaked sides. Once I had all my pieces of scrapbook paper cut to fit the four sides of each birdhouse, we're going to paint the roof and the base of our birdhouses. So I'm going to use that same Waverly chalk paint in plaster that we painted the glass candlesticks. And I'm just going to paint around the roof and like I said, the base of each of the birdhouses. It's okay if I get paint onto the sides because we're be going to be covering that up with scrapbook paper. So once the paint is dry, I'm going to be using my Mod Podge to apply a good layer on each side of the birdhouse. And then we will attach down the scrap of paper that we cut to fit it and press it down really well. This is thicker um, scrapbooking cardstock, so you want to make sure you press it really well and add any Mod Podge where it might not be sticking down. Just go ahead and go around your two birdhouses going back and forth until you have all four sides covered on each birdhouse. I decided to remove the rope hoop that was, or loop that was on the top of each birdhouse. And I then cut a thin strip of the matching cardstock and folded it and glued it across where that hole is, just across the peak there of the roof to coordinate with the paper and cover up the big hole.
Now coming to two of my candlesticks, I'm using a combination of E6000 and hot glue. I'm gonna glue these two candlesticks together, um, smaller end to smaller end. We're gonna let that sit and dry, and this is going to allow one of our birdhouses to be taller than the other. With my third candlestick, I'm just going to center it on the bottom of my birdhouse, make a couple marks with the pencil so that I know where to apply my glue, and then we will stick this birdhouse onto the candlestick or the candlestick onto the birdhouse. Either way, then flip that over to dry. Now, once my other two candlesticks are dried, I am gonna cover up that space where they're glued together just by tying a knot in some jute twine and wrapping it a few times adds to the farmhouse look and also covers up any glue that may be showing where these two candlesticks are glued together. Then we'll use hot glue again once we find which side of the two tall candlesticks we want to glue our birdhouse to. I have noticed with these that they're not completely flat, so keep turning it until you find the flattest side. I put hot glue all around except for on the very front edge and then glue your birdhouse down. And I love how these turned out. I love the painted look with the scrapbook cardstock and just think there are so many possibilities for this idea. If you love budget home decor DIY videos like this, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as that lets YouTube know people are enjoying my content and then they will show it to more and more viewers. For DIY number four, we're going to be repurposing some metal cans. We're also going to use some napkins, some greenery, flowers, and some of this jute covered wire. So I've never made these before, but I've seen them and wanted to give them a try. So taking my clean can, I also used the can opener to remove the bottom, and then you're going to kind of crush the bottom to make a little bit of a pocket. And I'm making two of these. So I found that it was best if you try to bend it in half or squish it in half on one of the seams. Then you are going to probably need to take a hammer just to get that even on the bottom, both on the front and the back. And I did this to both of my cans. So this is a napkin I just picked up at Dollar Tree and what I decided to do was paint one layer of a paint color that kind of matched the napkin. So here I'm using this dusky blue from Waverly to kind of match this napkin. And then the other napkin was given to me, but my Waverly chalk paint in Pink Cloud is a perfect peachy color to match this napkin. I did paint my cans on the front and the back. Then once my paint was dry, I took my Mod Podge, applied a good layer to the front, and then I'm going to stick down just the very top layer of my napkin. So if it has two or three plies, you're going to want to pull those off until you just have the top decorated um, ply. And then gently press that down onto your Mod Podge. Then you're gonna wanna use um, plastic or like I had press and seal, you can use that so that you can press out the napkin without possibly tearing the napkin with your fingers. So once you have it on there how you want it, you can see it's hanging over the top and bottom edges, but that's okay, we'll clean that up once it's dry. So here I'm doing the second pocket, this one with the peach color and Again, you'll just press that down gently, use your uh, plastic or whatever you're going to use to help press that down, and then let that dry.
So once our napkins and our Mod Podge were dry, I'm just taking my little sander and in a downward motion, you've seen me do this before. This is gonna help us clean up the edges of our napkin and get a nice clean edge. You will probably want to go over this with another light layer of Mod Podge, especially if these are going to be outside or anywhere that they might get wet. Next, I'm gonna use my Crepidile Big Bite to punch two holes in the back or sides of each of my pockets here. You could also use a nail with a hammer. I just have this Crepidile and it makes it so much easier to punch those holes. And this is where we're going to hang our jute covered wire to make a little hanger for each of our pockets. Then your last step is just to add whatever greenery or florals you want to decorate these cute little crushed can flower pockets. I love these, they're super fun to make. I definitely will be making more. For a complete list of all the supplies and tools I've used in today's projects, please click the down arrow next to the title of this video. That will open up the description box where you will see some of my most requested links to my Magnolia website, my Amazon storefront, and you will see a list for each project of the tools and supplies I used. For DIY number five, we're going to give a spring makeover to these houses. I have these from Target, but you can use the house shapes from Dollar Tree as well, as some scrapbook paper and a couple of these little wood scroll pieces. So what I'm doing is I'm taking, kind of like similar to the birdhouses, I'm measuring the opening there at the back of each of the houses, and I'm cutting some scrapbook paper so that I will be able to fit it in side and Mod Podge it. Now the paper I chose was not quite tall enough for this biggest house, so I am going to have a small little triangular piece there at the top, but I'm going to put that in first and then put the big piece over it so you'll hardly be able to even notice it. So get all your paper cut and lined up so that you'll then be ready to Mod Podge. So you can see here, I cut the rectangle as tall as the tallest part and then placed it inside and used my fingernail to mark out the angled pieces where I needed to cut those off. Now I'm using two of these little wood pieces from Hobby Lobby and I'm gonna give them a coat of Waverly chalk paint in white just to match the outside frame of our houses. Now putting a layer of Mod Podge on the back I'm going to just lay down the scrapbook paper, again, pressing it down as well as I can to get out any air bubbles. We'll do this to both houses and then we'll let them dry completely before we put Mod Podge over the top. There you can see that little triangle piece I needed just to be able to cover the entire back of this larger house. Then putting that other piece in, you can't even tell that it's two pieces. So press those down as well as you can and let them dry. While those are drying, I'm coming back to my little wood pieces here and I'm going to distress them up a little bit by taking some truffle chalk paint 
and just real messily going around the edges and a little bit on the inside. Then we'll come back with our little sander to mute that down a little bit and just give them a distressed look and not look like they were purposely painted like that. And like I said, we'll come back to our houses now that the paper is dry and do a, one more layer of Mod Podge over the top just to seal it in. Then taking that same truffle, I decided I wanted to distress the edges of my houses a little bit. So I'm just barely brushing some on the front edge and then I will go around the side edges as well. Then again, taking your little sander, you can mute that down so you have the look of distress that you like. Next, I'm going to take a couple of my small spring mini stencils from Magnolia, and I'm going to place those down on our little scroll signs that we painted. We're gonna use some pretty chalk paste colors that match our scrapbook paper and be able to add these to the center of our houses. In order to make my little signs stand out from the back of my house, I'm going to glue a block, you can use a tumbling tower block, a Jenga block, whatever you have, to the back of the sign and then we'll hot glue that to the back of the house. Again, just to give it a little bit more dimension. I did decide to add a little bit of greenery and florals to this taller house. I just felt like there was a lot of empty space. So once I have that on, I'm also gonna use this light mint colored um, lace ribbon that matches the chalk paste and add that to the top of the house as well. If you're on Facebook, I hope that you will go over there and follow my Monarch Mom DIY Facebook page. I do go live on my Facebook page about three times a week doing different projects than what I'm showing here on YouTube. For our final project for today's video, we're going to make this home sweet home hoop wreath using an embroidery hoop from a thrift store, some greenery, this home sweet home stencil from Magnolia, and some canvas cloth. So I measured how tall I wanted my cloth to be so that I could use just the words from this home sweet home stencil, and then I'm going to frame it out at the top and the bottom with some two inch black and white gingham ribbon. So once I get my stencil off the backing sheet, I can get that lined up on my canvas. Putting the backing sheet behind helps so that the stencil does not stick to the table below. So I'm gonna place this down gently and then get out my ribbon to see if I need to move the stencil down, and I do. So I'm gonna move it down just a little bit, get that centered right where I want it, 
and then we will stencil our words using our permanent ink. So we're going to apply just a small amount of our Magnolia Permanent Ink where we want them on the words and then we will remove any excess. Once this dries completely, we will heat set it with an iron for about three to five minutes so that even if this got wet, the ink would stay permanent. And now that our stenciled words are dry and heat set, we can take some hot glue or fabric glue and attach our ribbon across the top and the bottom. The next step will be to line up and decide where we want to place our material on our hoop. So we're gonna put the smaller hoop behind the canvas image that we stenciled and added the ribbon to. Then we're gonna place the larger hoop around it. And this part takes a little bit of time to try to get it lined up centered and get your fabric pulled nice and tight, especially where you added the ribbon on the sides. And you'll tighten up that screw there at the top and you'll see I'm kind of trimming the excess as I go. Next, taking some greenery, I'm gonna wrap some floral wire in the center, and then I'm going to wire it to the top of our hoop. And then I'm just gonna add a simple, small jute twine bow. Of course, you can make your wreath as elaborate as you'd like, adding big bows, adding florals all the way around, whatever fits your style. Thanks again so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Please let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite, and we'll see you next time. Take care.